Folks, I want you to remember something with me. Just a few years ago when a certain rallying cry rippled up and down the left and even got a fair bit of airtime in the media, this catchphrase became the slogan of emerging orders such as Antifa, and I'm sure you've heard it. Uh, The phrase was, punch a Nazi. Now, if when I said that, you immediately thought to yourself, gosh, I haven't heard that phrase in a while. Well, you'd be right. It kind of went out of fashion for a while, probably mostly because the left has been diligently working to rebrand themselves as the side of peace ever since they got mad and burned down a few cities, which you'll probably also remember. Nevertheless, the punch a Nazi mentality has not gone away, and there's little doubt that it typifies the modern perception of an intention toward the right. And that is fully on display in the story from last week about a man who literally ran over an 18-year-old kid because he was, according to this murderous piece of garbage, a Republican extremist. Like that was basically this dude's excuse for committing vehicular homicide. And by the way, investigators have already debunked this idea. Kaylor Ellingson was not, in fact, part of a Republican extremist group. And Shannon Brandt, the 41-year-old piece of garbage who struck him, is currently out on a $50,000 bond because he has, quote, a job, a life, and a house, and things that I don't exactly want to see go by the wayside, family that are very important to me. That's cute. Well, uh, guess who else had family who was important to him? Anyway, if the criminal justice system pulls its head out of its ass and anyone's eventually selling tickets to this dude's execution, let me know. I've got money burning a hole in my pocket. Now, let's get back to the whole punch a Nazi thing, because this case is going to go where it goes. Shy of some new and bizarre evidence coming forward, this guy is surely going to be brought up on murder charges, and one would hope he will disappear into a cell for the rest of his miserable and trashy life. North Dakota, where this took place, no longer has the death penalty, but like I said, maybe they'll pull their heads out of their asses someday. Punching a Nazi is based on a very old philosophical concept, one which is not well suited to a stable society. It's the concept of evil being good if it's done to the right person, and it's tricky because it's not always an inaccurate thing. For example, punching a literal Nazi who was engaged in literal Nazi behavior really might be a good thing, or at least a just thing. There's a difference, you know. Sometimes justice is not only is, is only not pretty, it's ugly as hell, but that doesn't mean it's not just. In the case of punch a Nazi, though, what we were seeing wasn't a philosophy of true justice. It was an ideological affirmation of your right to lash out at whoever you see fit, merely for their mortal sin of disagreeing with you. And while the phrase itself has died down among the left, the spirit behind it has gone nowhere. You see, the President of the United States standing in front of a blood-red background and talking about the danger posed by half of the country to the other half in the form of extremism, and the picture starts to clarify. I'm not blaming Biden, by the way, for this asshole running a kid over. I blame the asshole. But I'm very concerned about the culture that produced the asshole, too. Folks, we have to be judicious in the way that we approach violence. There are people on the left whose mouths do nothing but spew the most idiotic and bigoted horseshit I've ever heard. And I'm talking actual extremist types, and I've never punched one of them in the face, let alone hit them with my car. Why? Why is what's good enough for the goose is not good enough for the gander? Because speech is not violence, folks. It's not. We know this, and we've got to find a way to get the left to see it, or we're going to end up in another damn civil war of some type or another one of these days. I don't want that. You don't want that. Nobody sane should want that ah now hillary clinton (laughs) the other day had some things to say about uh about uh those of us quote on the right uh do you have that clip by chance you guys have that thing let's play it i remember as a as a young student you know trying to figure out how did people get basically um, drawn in by Hitler. How did that happen? And I'd watch newsreels and I'd see this guy standing up there ranting and raving and people shouting and raising their arms. I thought, what's happened to these people? Why did they believe that? You saw the rally in Ohio the other night. Trump is there ranting and raving for uh, more than an hour and you have these rows of young men with their arms raised. I thought, what is going on? So there is a uh, real pressure, and I think, I think it is fair to say we're in a struggle between democracy and autocracy. All right. Now, again, let me, let's be real clear. The thing that made Nazis Nazis was not the hand-raising. 
No. Okay. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here.